You're listening to Real Liberty Media. Please feel free to join in on our chat and live streams whenever you can. If not, access all of our podcasts at reallibertymedia.com. And remember, share Real Liberty Media with your friends, family, and on all of your social media outlets. Please help our station grow. And thank you for joining Real Liberty Media. Welcome to the Age of Fission Radio Show with your host, Lonnie Clark. We stand together and accept we now live in a world transformed by the nuclear industry. We expose and confront the intentional neglect and disregard for life on our planet by atomic energy. Consider social engineering programs who view our bodies, minds, and souls as assets on a balance sheet. We discuss vital current issues, interview activists, and engage our audience in an effort to allow all voices to be heard. We encourage our listeners to reclaim their power and their courage to take action to save our planet from the ravages of greed and indifference. Every voice matters. Our actions matter. We remind our listeners that happiness is resistance. Love is greater than fear. Good afternoon. This is your host, Lonnie Clark, with the Age of Fission Radio Show, and I am here with my friend, Thomas Ackerman. We're actually recording a Skype call, so we're seeing each other. So we might make comments about us seeing each other. But, Tom, why don't you introduce yourself to my audience here at the Age of Fission and tell them how you came. It was Tom's coinage of the Age of Fission. He's allowed me to name my sh- my name my show after that. So, I'm going to get into this with you a little bit because I'm I'm separating myself from a lot of that information. Uh, uh, I'm I'm trying to find another pathway. Uh, you know, it's like there are many different. Uh, what, there must be a saying about many different paths you can take to end up in the same place or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but I you know, know the difference is this is some pretty serious stuff because we're talking about what neighborhoods are poisoned. You know what I'm really discovering? Well, Tom, first. I will introduce you, Thomas. This is Thomas Ackerman, ladies and gentlemen, and he is a oh, very well-known artist. I believe he's out of Toronto, Canada. Isn't that the city up there, Toronto? Very close. Yeah, that's close. Yeah. <laughs> and that's really yeah. His artwork is little... phenomenal. I don't know if any of you have seen any of my posters, but the Shiva T-shirt that I've worn here in Eugene, or I don't know, you can probably look them on. Tom, tell them how to get to your website. Uh, Ackerman-Artist.com. You can see work I have uh, on my website. Yeah, uh, it's Ackerman it's there. with two ends. Uh, yes, two ends on Ackerman with a hyphen, and uh, there is a connection to my YouTube channel as well. I'll put the which, link. Uh, I, I'm not using that much anymore. I used to be very regular on the uh, nuclear issue uh, specifically. And other stuff, too. I mean, there's other well, things. Well, the thing in- is, this is where you and I became friends, because in looking at this stuff, this is why I asked you to be on today. Because it's not you can't just look at the facts. It's not just the facts. As I've said this many times on my podcast. I'm really sick about hearing about all the facts. Although this last week about Treasure Island with Steve Seltzer off of San Francisco Bay and the corruption of California politics and how filthy it was and why it got... My guess is every place where there's nuclear contamination, you have the same story of corruption. So that's Well, you have the same effect. You but see, Tom, this is yeah. where I I appreciate you because you don't really like you're you're sort of up to here with even listening about it. You don't want to hear about the facts anymore. You want to talk about well, the bigger me, picture. Well, let me put it. Well, okay. Here is, is there are different levels to this, right? Because I'm I'm evolving as a human being. I mean, this is hopefully before I shed this mortal coil. I have I'm a little different from when I was uh, 50 years ago or whatever, right? Ten years ago. So yeah. we, we're all developing, right? We're, as human, hope, hopefully, hopefully. Right. One yeah. of the one of the one of the sad aspects to our humanity is that we tend to become habitual, uh, almost ritualistic in our approach to living, and life is anything but ritual. I mean, there are certain things that uh, that that work well that you want to repeat like if you're let's say you want to be a healthy physically healthy human being 
you do the things that really work well, right? That's kind of like habitual. So whatever it is, you and I talked recently about the idea of that uh, vitamin C, li- what you, uh, liposo- um, liposomal. What are you talking Lip- about? That I, I'm talking about the idea. Oh, of the riboflavins in vitamin C. The, the, no, it's called liposomal. This is the link you sent me, the panacea for, you oh, know, and that vitamin- book. Oh, yeah, so that, I read that book, but those big words escaped me. I don't remember them. <laughs> All right, that's just the way of absorbing It's called Primal C. Panacea. It's a book about this Dr. Levy wrote this book to cure heart disease, actually. But I followed and can- it, and I but I followed its protocol and got over pneumonia in four days. Okay, so what he basically advocates, like Linus Powling, that vitamin C is a very good uh, substance to ingest, especially absorb in your cells. There is lots of complex. I don't want to get into that. But the idea of doing something habitual, if it's good for you, I would recommend it. I mean, you know, from a point of view of our physical well-being and all of that, there are things that we do that make us feel better about ourselves that are almost, I, I w- don't want to call them ritualized, but they're habitual. But for the most part, what I'm understanding about myself is that, especially as a painter, I don't want to repeat myself too much because it gets me entrenched in a way of thinking that blocks my own path toward, uh, for lack of a better word, I'll say enlightenment, that we're always searching for that feeling that makes us, I don't know, just a bit better than when we came, right? That feeling, I think. On the mark. Yeah, it's like personal. It's like every person has their path and they're very individual in terms of their own ability to absorb something. And and it's like all that is very personal. But in a general sense, what I'm finding myself um, re-evaluating is I was very, when we first met Lonnie, uh, this issue about nuclear is so uh, horrific. I mean, the whole notion behind this happening under our noses, you know, it's like there's lots of things that are happening right under our noses that are terrible. But this is so uh, cosmically huge for life on Earth that it really preoccupied uh, me from that uh, 311 date, right? It's uh, like I knew Chernobyl and Three Mile Island. Me too, when I found out about, I mean, I didn't find out about it till the next year. What, which one? What do you? Fukushima. Which one you talking about? Yeah. Really? Okay. I mean, I okay. heard about it, but I believe Barack Obama when he said everything was fine. I, hey. I, I mean, I literally What's remember more? looking at the TV, thinking, "Thank God, Barack Obama's our president." Thank God. You know, our because Nobel he's going to handle this correctly. Now, did I know at the time he packed his kids and went on a three-week vacation down south? No. To avoid the plume, yes. To Did avoid I know the that plume. Hillary Clinton sent out an email to all of her employees and this, you know, all of her entire department that said, "Stay inside, take your clothes off as soon as you come in the door." <laughs> so yeah, this is our, our great Nobel Peace Prize. Well, glorious. this is the Democratic Party. This is the thing that I've learned. The reason oh. we have Donald Trump in the White House, frankly, is because we have the Democratic Party who prefers Donald Trump over Bernie Sanders. One hundred percent. Bernie will beat Trump in a heartbeat. Yes, he uh, will. Trump doesn't have a chance. Yes, he will. But the point is that that's weird too. That we're sidelining this conversation. I didn't want to go there. But no. uh, the whole idea of uh, that's election, my own PTSD the, showing. <laughs> <laughs> you've identified it, and and like I said offline, we're responsible for the uh, the the dysfunctions in ourselves, right? We can't just sort of like people go to hospitals and expect doctors to help them miraculously. I mean, that's so ridiculous. We got to be our own. You know, think about this. Throughout humanity's entire history, there wasn't like, oh, I need to go run to the doctor. I need to get my shots. Humans lived. They didn't Uh, die. It's a fallacy that people died super early. You know what I mean? Like people lived a good age. Once we got into the industrial age and people did their home remedies and did things like that, People didn't die early. We did have a lot of childbirth death because of the way childbirth was manipulated by allopathic doctors. Like they insisted, you know, they took the whole birth thing away from women. Like once a woman goes into labor, if you go into a hospital, you lose all your rights. 
Yeah, that's so. amazing too. Yeah, that's a wow. You're you're creating a lot of topics to talk about. But the well, this is the thing, behind, Tom. This is what the whole Fukushima thing for me does. The whole thing well, no, about nuclear up, contamination. It opens yeah. up the whole picture of it's not just nuclear contamination. It's chemical contamination. It's mental contamination. It's the whole thing. It's the loss of our rights as individuals, and we just give them up because we think that's what the system says we have to do. I mean, it's even like with this democratic, so-called democratic election we're having in the United States, the so-called pillar of democracy refuses to have any election overseers. Do you know we're the only nation on earth that refuses to allow election overseers? We should bring on uh, Guatemalans and Hondurans to uh, oversee the elections. Oh, no, no, no. They'd be too easy to pay off. No. (laughs) No, I'm saying these are... We'd want some people from Switzerland and Germany. That's who I want. Lonnie, these are always the states that are named as being totally dysfunctional and ignorant. (laughs) They have a better track record at making elections real, you know, than... uh, Well, that's because they had to fight off the United States who rigs their elections since the early 1900s. I I mean, the United States is notorious... Look what they did in the last few years. It's absolutely ridiculous what they've done down there. And it really gets down to... What do you want to talk about here? I don't want to talk about... This is what I want to talk about. We have limited time because Tom has to leave, I think, in what time? How much longer do we have? 25 minutes. Okay. So I want to talk about the nuclear denial and how we break through that mentality of not just nuclear denial. I, I think you and I were on this earlier People sort of get into, they create their own habits. Like we become almost slaves to the things that harm us. Okay, well, yeah, that, that, that's what we're talking about. What I was saying about bad habits and good habits, right? So we're kind of stuck in, in some ways, in habitual behavior that is actually quite detrimental to our well-being. And that can be physical or it can be mental. I think it's on all levels. So what I was referring to in terms of my own evolution as a, as a, as a human being, I, the YouTube experience for me was quite interesting because uh, in the beginning when we first met, we were involved with Flanch on the nuclear uh, issues in terms of getting together. What I was really interested in is finding people and getting together physically to actually meet up and do stuff this is this is like where you show yourself whether you're just a blabbermouth or whether you're actually in the trenches, willing to get out of your comfort zone, meet up, uh, find what other people are thinking, saying, uh, have a whole conversation that develops it, it organically in some kind of way, right? Rather than just sitting in front of a screen, uh, blabbering a whole bunch of facts out to people and... Uh, you know, it, it may be valuable. It may be valuable. To, uh, I, I've, got, I've gained a lot from the stuff that well, people talk. The, I think right? a lot of I people have. who talk to the YouTube channel actually do. I mean, at least I know I do. I engage with my elected officials, and I do the stuff that I think I can. The things I think of, I, I actually do them. You well, know? you're excellent in this way because you make the phone calls. You actually get in there, into their faces. Yeah, like and I confront- mean. I mailed five of those pamphlets, you know, the Mina No Data Site pamphlets, the one yeah. that I read. I mailed them yeah. to the Olympic Committee. Woohoo! <laughs> Do we think yeah. we'll get an answer from them? No, I think that'll be shoved in some sort of tray that's like never going to be seen, probably. As soon as they see that, it's sort of like, ooh! Well, I didn't tell them thing. not to go. I just asked them to please do what the South Koreans are doing and take their own food and water. So, but that is that is a credit to you, Lonnie, in terms of being active, not just in a mental well, imagine, way. But this is kind of what I want everybody to do. Everyone who listens to this podcast, like you don't have to do a lot of different things. That's why I love Dave Parrish's channel, his Fuku Fridays. Every it's six yeah. minutes. It's oh, a quick, I love Dave Parrish. It's like a yeah. a cheerleading thing, you know. and yeah. it kind of like a poke in the eye as to why you can't just go back to sleep and ignore it. Because this, the things that we are facing, are like. TEPCO announces this week they are definitely going, as the International Atomic Energy Agency suggested, they are going to dump all that water in the Pacific Ocean. Because guess they what? They have been. They have been dumping this stuff all the time. <clears throat> I mean vast it's, amounts. 
They're going to yeah. unload. Okay, they're going to empty their vats. Yes, I know. They're those all those they don't have any more room to put all the stuff. Right? Well, not only that, so, so many of them go. are meant for only three years. Well, and the tritium that they're creating every day cannot be filtered in any way. So right. where is it going to go? Right, it's exactly. going to, right. But the thing is, Lonnie, I don't want anybody to do anything. I This is something that I've realized. I don't want anybody to do anything. This is not something that we can tell and expect and, you know, wake up, wake up, wake up. You know, all these types of... SGC, I'm with you on that. These, I, these I think SGC people are types. awake. I think people are awake. Of course. But Everybody I think knows. that they actually feel so <clears throat> paralyzed with despair because they don't see an answer. It's functional habit. Like, so this I, is I why know. I like Dave's idea, though, on 311 of doing a mass meditation, a worldwide meditation. On finding right, solutions him, and blessing him, yeah. the people involved yeah. in the nuclear industry to help. That's what I said. Like, yeah, we'll just pray to like change their minds and they focus on finding a solution instead of just lying to us all the time and you know. No, I have to tell you though. Okay, Lonnie, I have to tell you that 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 thing may not vibrate for me, but I advocate. Like, if a person feels inspired, this is the That's point. That's right. That, Do it. That's exactly right. right. Exactly. That's what Don't art is about, though. It. That, like, fundamentally, yeah. that is what your message of art is about. Is art is life. Art is everything in our lives. Like, be inspired in those things that you be do. Be inspired. It's like if art inspires yeah. you. Art is just a, like it's an uh, it's a thing that you look at. But for me, art is an actual physical act every right. day. It's right. something that I do, right? It's not something that I look at. It's something that I'm involved in as a painter. I am an artist. I make the stuff. I just don't talk about it. You're not an artist if you tell people, oh, yeah, I am an artist. Have you ever made anything? No, but I'm an artist. I actually have come across people that say, oh, yeah, I'm an artist. I've been thinking about doing it for the last 30 years. You know, I, I'm an artist. So it's kind of like that. Oh, Whatever that's, it is. That's that, bad. That's, I wonder what else in their lives they're putting off. Yeah, but, but these are, you know, Lonnie, it's like, it's okay. They're, they're, they just sound ridiculous because it's like if, if I'm talking to somebody that's really good at what they're doing, the reason they're good at what they're doing is because they've done it. <laughs> and if you do something long enough, you get good at it. It's I, that's like, right. even if, that's like, right. if, if, like a commitment, like a personal commitment. So here, here in, in what I was thinking about when I, you said, let's have, let's have a chat. I was thinking to myself, okay, what is it inside me that has changed over the last nine years almost now since Fukushima happened, right? right? This is a pivotal event. You and I understand it. You have your approach. I have my approach. Even people that I'm not so crazy about, you know, it's like they have their, if right. they have their fight, pick your fight and fight it, right? Exactly. Pick your fight. Exactly. Even the environmentalist types that are still going on about climate change, which is a bunch of hooey, the way they're thinking about it. But you know what? I love them because they've picked a fight and they've got a bone in their jaw and they're not going to let it go. And I like that, right? I like that. They'll come, you know, it's like I, I'm thinking about this environmental coffee house lady. Do you, have you come across her? Yes. And I really like her, right? But they're pounding at this thing, and I'm not saying there aren't... I get aren't... what you're saying. It gets a bit repetitive. Yeah. Now, for her, okay, now, uh, I, I, I'm not picking on her. I'm just saying that if you miss, <laughs> if you miss the elephant in the room, right? Like the nuclear thing is the elephant in the room. There exactly. is no other That's issue. That's right. That's exactly I'm not, right. I'm not saying there is a diminished issue with uh, releases of, of methane and all that. But we can't do anything about that. But actually, nuclear can. causes that. Nuclear does you go. cause that. There you go. You have a melting, like the nuclear... It, wouldn't uh, Sean, in my last interview, he was he, you know, he got into the science of this. Nuclear becomes, it releases, when they produce it, it's not CO2, it's CO3, which is inclusive of CO2. But it heats the environment up, right? The way ocean faster. is being heated up. CO3 yes. is way faster. So, like, it's a massive contributor. Yeah, right. But my point is that what I'm thinking is that, uh, yes, you pick your fight, but then there is this overwhelming, um, that we all know, by the way, we know this is the issue on the planet. No matter what anybody does, the shills, the trolls trying to diminish us, trying to attack us, trying to get us off the thing, even the ones that have like a really good cause they're fighting for, but you got to always have this 
going on in the back of your head. I, I'm on my environmental fight, but if I miss this, I'm missing like the most important a thing. A major that's component. Ever. Yeah. Yes, ever. No, ever. Ever. Like, when was a nuclear plant in history of humankind? Now, I don't know in the time of the pyramids. Maybe there was a similar thing. You talk Maybe about. Maybe that's mystical. what caused the collapse of those entire civilizations was nuclear. Hey, hey, I, I am not going to pronounce what history really is, but right. I'm keeping it open. I have the possibility. Me too. I'm with you on a, that. I'm with you on that. Like. There's a great YouTuber called, I think he calls him John Levy or J-O-N Levy. He does historical uh, research on how buildings were made that we no longer are able to make. Where did they get this? Yeah, the, uh, that amazing technology building. where they can yes. like, laser exactly. in and those bricks. Don't, you can't even put a piece of paper in between them. And all of Incredible. those incredible. Or those how did they get temples in, in India where they like carved all those gods and all the animals right into the rock, like very intricate. How do they do There that? are so many anomalies in the way it's being explained that makes no sense. Right, right, the, right. The, the white coats explain shit to us and it makes no sense. So there are fabulous YouTubers out there that are doing their research. I would never discourage anyone from researching and getting behind it and, and, and giving us something to chew on that makes sense, right? What if we're listening to the consensual so white So then why did you stuff? stop? You know, you name your channel is do you do Art Rant or you do H Thomas Ackerman? No, I'm Ackerman. Ackerman. Ackerman yeah, it's like H Thomas Ackerman on YouTube. On yeah. YouTube. Yeah, that's your actual yeah. one. But Tom, that's like what? you're kind of a thinker and you, you you like he's kind of stopped doing a lot of YouTube. He's an artist. You guys must go to his page because his artwork is unique. And really mind bending. He has some really awesome work on. Lonnie has Shima. unconditional love for me. That's why I love Lonnie because uh, you know, as artists, we need to be loved a lot. And, I do. <laughs> His work is awesome. You guys would not even believe it. If any of you were, oh, well, hopefully this video, I'll be able to figure out a way. I don't think I can put the video on. I didn't record it on YouTube because I couldn't figure out how to play back the audio for the radio, but. If you guys go to his website, you'll see his artwork. And it is, he has artwork as we're speaking in the background. So while he was talking earlier, I'm just like focusing on his paintings in the back. <laughs> so, but Tom, you used to do YouTube videos and try to give your opinions, 10, 15 minutes opinions about like how people should come. I think the biggest thing was your ideas on how to comport yourself because that's the one thing I think people go to YouTube for that other than the stupid, silly stuff of looking at babies and dogs, you know what I mean, and cooking <laughs> channels. Videos, yeah. The most successful cat videos. But people yeah. want to have different ideas on how to comport themselves and ways to challenge, you know, like the way we're doing things is so medieval. I mean, really. Yeah, yeah that's a good word. That's a good word, yeah. It it's is. It's like total not all. It is really beyond, and I think that, in the medieval times, people then, not many people had educations, and so they did rely on the seers and the people who were connected and had educations to tell them information. And I think we're in that same place because we live in a culture, although we have tons of books, not many people read books. That's the real reality. They don't read or, books. Or they don't I really would... read the articles. There's tons of studies yeah. that show if you send somebody an article, they might skim through it and get 10% of it, but they don't get the whole thing. There, there is no, there, there is no formula or standard that, as far as I know, that leads us to to this to this better place. And you know, I've talked a lot about this in terms of conscience. That there are elements within each human being that are universal. And one of them is this aspect to us, which is a mystery. We don't know where the hell this comes from, but we know right from wrong. We don't need a, a, a stone tablet right. to tell us what is right or wrong, right? This is like usurping our own, what is that, that, uh, that inner intuition. That yeah. Yeah. You, you can call it whatever you want, but we have this innate quality that makes us human beings very distinct in the, in, in the, in life, in the animal kingdom that we appear to have something that is called a conscience. And this is something well, that, that has... Well, I wouldn't been. say that's very distinct. We don't know if whales or dolphins or True. those people okay. have those those creatures, because I think they're very human-like. And but other animals... 
Well, a dog knows when it's doing wrong. If you've ever had a dog and you go, hey, what have you been doing? They're like, oh, really? Oh, you mean their eyeballs roll back into their skull? I mean, they know they did wrong. They have a conscience. You know what I mean? But see, this is the thing about love. I think this stems out of love. I know we're running out of time, but I think this stems out of the whole idea. I think Gaia, our planet, the gift of our planet to the universe is love. And I think that's what we have on this planet. We create love. And I, that's why I you're, say you're, happiness. You're invoking, you're invoking something even higher than what I'm trying to deal with, right? <laughs> it's something that I, I, I work towards, you know, as best I can. I'm talking about things that seem to be attainable. I think the love principle love is, is something attainable. that. I don't think you can actually get away from it. Like, that's where misery comes from. If you turn your back on it, that's where you get miserable. People that hate themselves. Well, look themselves. at the world. The world is bloody miserable. It's like right. if you just look around, people who have their head in the sand say, oh, no, it's all working. Well, you know, it's like whether you look at it personally or, or collectively, globally or whatever, it's, we're, in, we're in a bad state right now, especially with this nuclear issue. So un, unless, unless something yeah. personal is resolved, that's what I say, Lon. And, of course, you can invoke the idea of love, and I find this to be, uh, uh, I don't know, I, I get almost teary-eyed when I, when, I, when I think about this level of being a human being, what it is we're capable of, right, to be loving. But I approach it from the point of view where I can talk to people, and I, if I say conscience, they, they want to shut down. Okay, I, if you say love, I guarantee most people will just immediately shut down because it's something they feel they never had, they never felt, they huh. never get, okay. whatever. I right? understand that. Okay. So, so I, I avoid it. I actually avoid it. It's sort of like going to a Catholic church. I avoid it like the play, you know, in a certain <laughs> way. Because I know we, we, we're so desperate for this feeling of love that as soon as it comes up anywhere, it's like, oop, down, right? And we have all defense mechanisms to keep us from actually opening ourselves up. So what I try to do is, like when I talk to a person, is I, I, I want to extract, like I use my paintings for that reason too. I want to extract something that they feel within themselves, that they get so excited about, and something that they can themselves be able to do. Like you don't have to make a painting, but if you can, if you can actually connect with this part in us that's the conscience to do the right thing, do you think we'd be in the shitter we're in now if every person decided to do the right thing? That's true. That's right? true. I mean, we look what we're living through shit. right this second. We're having people exactly. apologizing on camera for doing the wrong thing because they're going to do the wrong thing. And they're saying, well, we're really sorry, but we're going to do this. <laughs> exactly. It, it, it sort of it, it makes no sense. <laughs> As if it's their like conscience feels burned. any better because they've apologized ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bless you sister you know it's like go forth and multiply uh, it's yeah, like and it uh, will too. you know david burns uh you know talking at stop making sense it's like that kind of a a feeling to me it's yeah. as soon as something makes sense you shut it down it's almost as though there is an aversion for this quality we have in our uh in us and if you can only inspire a person to want to do the right thing doesn't mean they do it but at least it's in their brains it's somewhere that might motivate them to act in a certain way that's different from the habit, those habitual ritualized behaviors that are sinking our ship. That's what I say. The habitual behavior is sinking our ship. That's how I look at it. And anything that will draw me away from this, 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 this functional habitual behavior is a bonus. It's like fabulous. I encourage people to whenever I can. Do you know what I mean now? It's, yes. it's like to draw this out. So is the information going to do it, Lonnie? Is it somebody spouting off all the truth and all the stuff that they believe to be well, uh, true? Well, some information might be helpful because when people hear like, that's in fact why I reported like on Treasure Island. It was like such a jam to understand this about. I Intuitively, I've known for a long time that Nancy Pelosi was really – uh, very corrupt, and Diane Feinstein extremely corrupt because of what they've done, what I've watched them do in the Senate. But to actually see that they were intrinsically involved in re in locating uh, very poor people 
on a radioactively contaminated site and building condos and get their families profiting from sure. the condo. I mean, no, it, I, it's environmental I, I, racism, oh. complete definition, with two powerful women. And this is, my, I kind of have an interest in this because I have noticed that the nuclear industry always uses women to do its filthy, dirty work. There's always a woman at the forefront. There's always yeah, some I, there's woman willing to There's actually a nuclear site called Women. Mothers for Nuclear. Did you ever come across that? Yes, I have, actually. I have. I have. <laughs> that's, that's like an oxymoron. Although, Mothers. you know, my sister last night, who was a Trumpster, when I was telling her what Trump re reclassified 100 million gallons of waste, I'm like, that can't be good. She goes, well, we don't know. We'll have to see. Maybe it won't be so bad. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see when everybody drops dead. <laughs> well, point, not just that. You're transporting is, it on the highways and contaminating because they're not in – in containers that protect yeah. all the radioactivity because it's highly radioactive, so it's in minimally protected containers. As you're driving down the highway at whatever hour of night, if you pass them, you are going to be exposed for however long you're exposed to that vehicle on the highway. So if you're driving along some truck in the middle of the night... You're getting a dose. You're a getting a dose, dose and you don't even know it. It's like an x-ray times a thousand. Yes, it's sad. Anyway, but, Tom, no, now, I'm well, nervous about the time here. How much time do we have? Okay, no, but I want to make time. this one more point. Okay. This one more point about information. I wouldn't argue with you about that. There is really valuable things that I, you can tell me and I can tell someone else. But what is really crucial in this, what I've understood, is when I intent for me is everything. So when I, when I hear somebody spout stuff, it may be true, not true, whatever. It's the intent that delivers the message that, from my point of view, I want to communicate. So if your intent is to propagate some sort of special thing that you have, you want everybody to do, you're going to start uh, uh, getting into a situation where, um, like, we all know each other's motivations. I Even though there are people that make their living on lying, we all know, like even let's say you go to a used car salesman, whenever you go into the lot, you know he's going to lie to you, right? But you still go <laughs> and you buy the goddamn car from him. And I don't. Two, I've never bought a used car at a used car lot. Well, okay, that's the archetypal example, right, of the snake oil <laughs> I know salesman. what you're saying, yes. Okay, so intent is everything. Yes. Intent makes the difference. The car is still the yes. car, but the intent. So if he tells me, yeah, this car may only last six months. Right. He would never do that. He'd say, no, no, it's good for 10 years, but, you know, we'll give a six month guarantee or whatever. Point is, we know when people lie. I believe so that. It's beyond believe the intent. See, it's not what your intentions are. It's what you actually do. You might intend to do good, but are you going to? Like if you well, if you, you know not do good if you intend to do good, I don't think so. You will always correct self correct. I think we have self correcting abilities. You'll always correct yourself. I think you'll realize as soon as you've done the mistake, you'll go back and revise. And if you do it again, you'll revise. You'll correct. I, I have faith in people that way. I think that that might be a smaller portion of people. I've known lots of people like, oh, screw it. I'll just leave it like that. I don't care. Like they just they don't have any interest in self-correcting unless they get. So I think it gets down to, again, self-love. I think people that love and honor themselves and really want to like, connect with who they really are and love themselves instead of feeling like they're losers anyways, why fix it? Like that negative self-talk inside themselves is what keeps people on the wrong path and keeps them from self-correcting. So for me, when I say the answer is love, like I really believe like the first place it starts is self-love. We need a society where people, not just are narcissistic, selfish people, but people who really appreciate who they are can look at themselves and smile and say, you know what, I really love myself. Everything warts and all, no matter what you look like, that's the vessel that you're living in, and honor that. And when you move from that place, everybody's life around you improves because you can't, I don't believe you can build a healthy society with people who do not love themselves. And what happens is we now have a society of complicity because we have so many people hating themselves. I mean, think about where the Western culture came out. It rocketed out of the Victorian age where everything was all controlled and under wraps. You know what I mean? And it was a 
we came out of this age where we had this idea of free, even the idea of democracy. This is why I think that American democracy has gotten way off track because our democracy and our constitution was not built for capitalistic means in lots of ways. It was venturing into that. It's kind of like this idea of we're going to give everybody a vote and we're going to try to make things even. That's all a new idea. We didn't have this throughout human history. These are all brand new ideas. So it's easy to screw up. But if you come at it with a point of self-love, you can love your neighbors if you love yourself. If you really love yourself, you feel much more kindly towards your neighbors. That's what I think. I think that's the fundamental root. And I think that's how civilizations prosper. And when you stop loving yourself and you stop caring about everybody around you, that's when civilizations crumble. Unless they get decimated by some oppressor. <laughs> That's now, happened always, too. <laughs> there's always the guy carrying the big mallet and hammer. That's happened quite and a bit. Get, you know, we're getting hammered by the, the big nuclear hammer every day. So we are getting the big nuclear We can love ourselves to whatever end, but then the hammer comes down, right? There is so much nuclear news. Like, I could report on this. Like, I'm part of these email chains where I get nuclear information. Like sure. Donna, Steve Seltzer, Beyond Nuclear, they all come to me like, Levy and Levy and I were talking about this. We could just sit here and do this every day. Like, this yeah, is... Yeah, of course. It, it means 24 the, 7. The thing 24 is, 7. It's it never is, an end. The nuclear industry didn't anticipate the Internet. So the information is now out there. People know it's being blanketed, in fact. But what's happening is the nuclear denial is so grave and so deep-bedded in our psyches that people don't even acknowledge that nuclear causes harm. My sister just died from cancer, colon cancer. Stage 4 diagnosed in November and just died in January. She lived 20 miles south of San Onofre, right on the coast in San Diego, blasted by n nuclear contamination from Fukushima, plus the San Onofre. Uh, oh. She's been there five years. Now, the family is like, well, if that's true, why don't we all have cancer? Right. Well, you know why? She was a vulnerable person, first off. She had Hashimoto's disease when she was 18. She had her thyroid out. So she's precancerous, you know what I mean, already. So it makes sense she's the first one to get severely affected. We allow ourselves to believe in lies in order to share the pain. It's like there is a saying that, uh, you know, certain individuals delight in the misfortunes of others. This is one of the unfortunate uh, byproducts of, uh, I guess, the civilization that, as you say, doesn't love itself. We delight in the misfortune of others more than we delight in their success. This is this is unfortunately uh, a pattern, another one of those patterns that is disgusting. But you said I, I'm a little, we allow I, ourselves to share the lies in order to what? Well, pe people accept the lies uh, because they they delight in the misfortune of others. It's like lies lead to pain and suffering. Ultimately, you cannot you cannot sustain yourself on lies. Nuclear industry is just another word for lying all the time, right? So ultimately, what happens in people is like they they have this they have this like if you, what you just talked about. I agree with you that that self love, that true self love, you have to earn that in a way too. You can't just get it. Oh, I love myself. That's it. You have to work on it. You got to take care well, of yourself. Well, I think Pete, children are born help. loving themselves, but my like my goal as a parent was to stay out of my kids' way. You know what I mean? Like to allow, and yet my children still struggled with self-loving but they're you know self-loving people but they've had their issues it's natural in our culture that pounds you this stuff out of you we can't help it the, the natural part of us has been so suppressed and repressed yeah and uh uh eclipsed by systems of behavior that make no sense whatsoever right. this is what i mean by civilization would be a good idea as gandhi said civilization and culture is the backbone of the lies that we accept every day to deny the love that you're talking about. Right. This is something in the system. Lonnie, it's not something that, uh, you know, was uh, uh, we were born with. This is something that we adjust ourselves to as we get older and older. That is very older. true, and that's actually probably why people look at me and say, oh, you're bucking the system. <laughs> good, good. Because I think a, I am, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, in lots of parts of ways in my life. Is your... 
Yeah. I mean, you know, honestly, that that kind of attitude, that contrarian attitude, I much prefer, even if you're not exactly 100 percent what I think, you know, <laughs> you're you're on the level. But as long as you're contrarian, that's what I say, like as environmental long as you're contrarian. <laughs> I, I, I'm bringing See, this I never up thought I was contrarian. This is the issue. I never considered yes, myself I, contrarian. Yeah, standing on the on the road by yourself with a sign saying uh, <laughs> nuclear pills, you know, it's like when scientists uh, open their mouth, it's like you die. My big <laughs> sign, when scientists lie, people die. <laughs> exactly. Standing and in standing front of the a, university the science lab. Road, on the busiest road in Oregon, you know, and like people go by and you're standing by yourself. Oh no, Lonnie's not a contrarian. Oh no, she's just like out there having a coffee and having a good time. I gotta go, Lonnie. Okay, well it's great. Thank you for I, coming I and go. being on this it's, podcast. Uh, well, I'm expecting somebody in the five minutes. That's so, uh, awesome. Well, thank you for being part of our podcast, and I hope you come back, Tom. It'd be awesome. I'll send you the link. Oh uh, yeah, we'll we'll have. I, we're friends. We talk all the time uh, as much as we can. Well, I so, think it's uh, important to get these ideas out to people. So I really appreciate I, your time. I, I'm so glad you called and uh, had this uh, uh, talk with you. Me too. Put your courage feet on, you guys. Bye. Bye, honey. Bye. I hope you enjoyed that interview with our guest, H. Thomas Sackerman. This is your host, Lonnie Clark, with the Age of Fission radio show. We have a few more minutes left over. And I want to post up the audio sound of my guest last week, Dave Parrish, who has a YouTube channel by the same name and a website, Operation Save the Earth. Posted this video up last Friday. Every Friday he posts up a video called Fuku Fridays. It's five or six minutes long. I hope you enjoy it. And we'll be discussing all of this on the other side. So I hope you enjoy this uh, quick little video I'll post up and we'll talk to you on the other side. Eight minutes to spread the love. It is Valentine's Day, after all, and that means love of all people, animals, plants, rocks, and solar systems. Good. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about some other important dates that are coming up. Hey, y'all, it's Dave here, and this is the Fuku Friday Happy Hour Hangout for February 14th, 2020. We're halfway through February already, and guess what? That means we're less than a month away from the ninth anniversary of the Fukushima nuclear disaster, which still affects Japan and the rest of the world 3,262 days later. I'm finalizing particulars with Easy Talks Cloud Meeting Services to set up a web space where we can all gather on March 11th at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, for an hour-long guided meditation with Michael Post of Samadhi Sea of Wisdom. I'll have link information ready for you next week, so put it in your schedule today as we get ready to spend a lunch hour in vibrational space spreading love to everyone who is affected by this nuclear nightmare, which is everyone on the planet Earth. Another couple of dates to remember that are coming right up are July 24th and August 25th, the start dates of the 2020 Summer Olympic and Paralympic Games, respectively, in Tokyo. Instead of funneling money and resources to Fukushima Prefecture to stop the flow of radiation into the Pacific and into the atmosphere there, as well as offer substantive relief to residents still living close to radioactive hotspots, the Japanese government and the International Olympic Committee are hell-bent on keeping things on track so the games will go off without a hitch. But there are a few problems standing in their way. First off is the Wuhan coronavirus. With the games less than five months away, there is a concern that the Olympics might be canceled outright because of the developing situation in China and around the world in response to the outbreak. Last week, Tokyo Olympics organizer Yoshiro Mori expressed concern about the virus and how it would impact the Olympics. But this week, he walked back those concerns when IOC officials came into town. I mean, could you imagine... Ever since the Fukushima nuclear disaster began, Japan has done everything in its power to prevent the nuclear issue from derailing its opportunity to waste money, uh, I mean, host the games, only to be stymied by a viral outbreak? I wouldn't put a lot of money down on the coronavirus slowing the train too much as July approaches because too much money has already gone out the door for the event, but... It will be interesting to see how it all unfolds in the weeks to come as the virus continues to spread globally. The other problem the Olympics face is us 
Fuku fighters in Japan and around the world have had a sour outlook on the games ever since it was announced that Japan would host in 2013 when Prime Minister Shinzo Abe-kun blatantly lied to the IOC and said Fukushima radiation would never pose any problems because there is no problem at the Daiichi site. I hope everyone out there is still funneling information to the athletes, trainers, and coaches who will be at the games this year to let them know where all the hot spots are and to have caution about what food is being sourced to them. I mean, South Korea has already stated that it's sending food and water along with its country's athletes to Tokyo, to, and I think that's a good idea. If every team and competitor did that, at least you'd know for sure where your food is coming from and how radioactive it isn't before you get there. Oh, and if you still believe that all the radiation from the triple meltdown at TEPCO's Daiichi site has magically been scooped away and scrubbed off from every place there is in Japan, believe me, I got a bridge to Tokyo from Los Angeles, I can sell you. Cheap! It's like I told you, Fuku Fighters, 2020 is going to be a big year for us. And we're just getting started. If you haven't already, guys, what do you got to do? Take step one for yourself, get more information, and then share it to everybody I just said, right? Go to our website at OperationSaveTheEarth.com and just, you know, click on the helpful link section. Everything you need is right there. And then when you're ready for more, sign up for our free weekly newsletter by sending me an email at info at OperationSaveTheEarth.com so I can put you on that mailing list. And also, don't forget to follow us on Twitter. That's at O-S-T-E, eight minutes all spelled out. And hey, thanks for subscribing and liking these videos here on YouTube. Every little bit helps. And believe me, that algorithm is against anything that has to do with the Fukushima nuclear disaster. So keep on it, Fuku Fighters. Now, Japan wants the recovery games to be a shining beacon of progress after 3-11-2011. But really, it is a public shame and an ultimate disrespect to people who've had to deal with the cover-up of the worst nuclear disaster of the past 30 years. Our job is to use the Olympic platform to shine a light on those that really need it and to keep visitors and participants as safe as possible. If the Olympics get canceled, it makes our job a lot easier. So let's see what happens in the weeks to come as things develop. Either way, mark your calendars now, Fuku Fighters, and get ready. The real work lies ahead. So until next time, this is Dave saying peace and good fortune to everyone. Take care till then. Boy, isn't that the truth, Dave? We have definitely have the hard work is definitely ahead. I don't know about you guys, but I really love listening to Dave's uh, videos. I look forward to every Friday. He doesn't get a lot of... I think that YouTube is actually suppressing his view counts, to be honest. I cannot believe he has a, that low of subscription nor that many view counts because I know people that are on YouTube that say they listen to him. So, anyways, that's neither here nor there, but I actually do enjoy his videos. I hope you did, too. Uh, if you like it, please go to his YouTube channel. If you like it, thumbs up at least, please, and subscribe. He's not for profit, so I think I can actually even on KEPW say this to you because it's not against the rules, I don't believe. It helps our humanity for all of us to figure out how to get involved. I will definitely have the links for H. Tom Sackerman, uh, his website and his YouTube channel. Same for Dave Parrish. Dave's YouTube channel name is his exact name, D-A-V-E-P-A-R-R-I-S-H. And we'll have the links on my YouTube channel, uh, and I'm going to post this up also on my Spreaker channel, which is the Age of Vision ra radio show. You, you can find it there. Look for Lonnie Clark. And um, I do want to make a little announcement, because in my interview with H. Thomas Ackerman, I did something I rarely, rarely do. I edited our conversation because it floored me. I'm not going to play the video audio of it because I was like, wow. It was at the beginning of our conversation I wanted him to explain how he came up with the name The Age of Fission. And he said, wow, you're still doing your podcast. And I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, that's really great. And I'm like, I can't believe that he's not listening. And he's, we talked about it on air, as you'll hear, as you did hear. And, uh, but I did edit it out because 
it he said it's like it turns into white noise and that is exactly it that's that's the whole nuclear denial and it hit me like a ton of bricks i do not want to be like white noise at all there's more things to do with my very short life i'm 64 <laughs> so rather than just be silent on this and me disappearing i thought i'd let you know that on march 11th is I'm going to be on Real Liberty Media on their podcast. I'm going to have Dave's interview uh, on that day. I don't know how long it will be, and I'll probably be live a little bit longer after that. It's going to be my live last podcast, and I'll post it up on KEPW. It will go to my website, but I'm not going to do the podcast anymore. I really do not want to be white noise. There's other activities that I could do that might be more effective because, you know, my thing is I want to break the nuclear silence. And if I'm just white noise and not even my friend, someone who really supports me and really believes in me, and in fact, that is what kind of gets to me. My friends and my family, nobody listens to it. I think it's extremely important, but no one pays attention. So I'm not doing it anymore. So after 3-11-2012, 20, not 12, that's, I started in, uh, I think it was September September 14th, 2014. That was when I started, I think, my very first, po first podcast on my own. Anyways, it has been a pleasure. I hope you guys will listen to the next few interviews, but I decided to give my audience the, according to YouTube, I get like 30 listens to 25 to 30 people listen for six or seven minutes. I don't have a high retention they don't promote me. People don't listen. So I'm just not, I mean, I they, I get a higher content if I post up videos that are 15 minutes or less. If that's what it's going to take, I'll do that. I am definitely going to keep my YouTube channel active because for that reason, I still have things to say and I do want to report on nuclear contamination. But doing the podcast is not productive and I think it is white noise. And uh, even within the community, the anti-nuclear community, I haven't gotten, you know, much. Yeah, I would say not much. They like me, but not really because I don't really understand the science and I don't have a mind for it. My thing is we need to just stop it and stop the nuclear denial. We don't need more tests, actually. We need some tests because women and children have not been tested mostly. Once they realized how damaging it is to babies and infants and women and children, they stopped testing them. Just like they turned off the uh, radiation meters across the country. They just like, oops, we don't need these. Turn these off all across Japan, all across the United States. Canada's had theirs off for years. No, no testing. Well, time's up. We got to get going here. My hour is just about up. I really appreciate my audience. Please do listen to the next few podcasts. They're going to be really great, even though I've told you that I'm leaving. The people that are listening, I'm not going to be gone until 3-11. Uh, Damon Matt's story from Oregon Physicians for Social Responsibility is going to be with me, and Dave Parrish. So I really appreciate you listening to us and joining us and caring about our planet. And as I like to say, put your courage feet on. We'll talk to you guys next week. Take care. Thank you for joining the Age of Vision radio show with your host, Lonnie Clark. We'll be back next week to bring you more information about the nuclear industry and the harm it's causing our planet and humanity. Find all of our podcasts on Spreaker.com or on YouTube at Nuts for Art, N-U-T-Z-F-O-R-A-R-T. Thank you for being part of the solution. You're listening to Real Liberty Media. Please feel free to join in on our chat and live streams whenever you can. If not, access all of our podcasts at reallibertymedia.com. And remember, share Real Liberty Media with your friends, family, and on all of your social media outlets. Please help our station grow. And thank you for joining Real Liberty Media.